Hey guys, welcome back to our Tosis cast. We are going into the losers match here of the CNSL season six, uh, group E in the round of 32. Uh, this is going to be a Zerg versus Zerg. It's going to be between Absolute, our strong amateur Korean player, uh, playing the blue Zerg. And here in the red Zerg, we're going to have Fengji, who is one of the uh, very best Chinese Zergs. Uh, a very strong player, definitely has given some good games against these top Koreans. Uh, so hoping he can do that here as well. Our map is Nemesis. And... I'm hoping for a good game. I think Nemesis gives reasonably good ZVZs, right? There are some maps that give better ZVZs than others. This is better than like a Vermeer for ZVZ, but not like a map where I'm like, ooh, real potential, right? <laughs> uh, very strange maps can give you real potential for something. Like imagine Sparkle, right? It's like, okay, well that could be interesting. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for joining me here on our Tosis cast. Uh, yeah, we're ripping through the CNSL. I hope that you guys are enjoying. I'm trying to stack up a lot of games with each other. So since this is Zerg vs. Zerg, <laughs> there is no doubt, unless it is the most epic Zerg vs. Zerg of all time, uh, there will be Game 5 after this as well. Uh, but yeah, they trying to trying to zip right through, provide a ton of content. And uh, if you're enjoying Artosis cast, I appreciate it very much. Like This is a, a passion project. I love that so many people are watching and, and really loving it. Uh, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you want, there is a Patreon as well. Patreon.com forward slash Artosis. That is down in the description. And a big shout out to uh, Caster Muse. Uh, he is the one who creates the CNSL. Uh, sends me all the replays. And you can find his links below in the description as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, let's take a look at these builds, right? From Fangji, a more aggressive one. He is going for a gas and pool rather quickly. Down here for Absolute, instead a hatchery first uh, into his pool as well as extractor. So looking at this, actually in this case, generally it's considered that the hatchery first is going to be a little bit ahead because this isn't like a hyper aggressive nine pool or anything. And it's cross spawn. So the odds of any Zerglings doing real damage to Absolute is very, very low. Uh, you know, he's just, he's going to have his spawning pool on time. So it's not like you look at this and say, oh, that hatchery might die. I don't think the hatchery will die. <laughs> uh, but that being said, like in it is considered to be, uh, you know, the, the hatch first be slightly advantaged. I feel like in more recent times, these very, very, very quick one hatch uh, muta builds, I do feel like that comes down to the player playing uh, the one hatch muta because even though like the your opponent's going to have more larva and you know more more resources that they could mine a second geyser if they can get up there uh into that mutalisk tech the one hatch player has the mutas out so quickly that if you use them really smart in a really smart way uh you know tactically i've seen top pros players like queen and you know soma and stuff win games in this position just absolutely in a dominating fashion now, Absolute is going nothing but Zerglings right now, which is a pretty common thing to do with a hatchery first. You're just going to have more larva. So to just make like a million speedlings, oftentimes you can overwhelm the one hatch player. Now, the one hatch player has to recognize what's happening and he actually comes in and starts the engage. So that was like, that was a very decisive move and you have to respect a very decisive move, but it was wrong. There were more lings. Uh, so even though he got good surface area immediately, this was, this was not good for Fengji. I actually think Fengji is... Well, he kills a drone there, which is nice, but he lost a few too many lings. You need to have like enough lings to slow your opponent down in this situation. There is another hatchery on the way, but I think if Absolute just pulls a trigger on nothing but lings and attacks across the map, this is an incredibly hard hold. Uh, this is a flat ground. There are two eggs here that you can make a line in, but I think Absolute is going to overwhelm Fengji just because of that one moment, right? And th this is the crazy thing about Zerg vs. Zerg is that things can go wrong like that. And look, he is lining up the lings, but he might not even have them in time. And this is just so many lings coming across the map. Look at this. He's got like 12 to 14 more lings than his opponent. Uh, so yeah, you can see right now, Fengji is just gonna die. That is gonna be it. Uh, it doesn't matter what's in these eggs. It could be, it could be Guardians popping out of there. It doesn't matter. He's gonna lose every drone. 
<laughs> That's ZVZ for you sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, Fangji not having a great showing here in the CNSL uh, Season 6. But Absolute going to go on to play against Free in that final match. Should be an excellent PvZ. And we're going to jump into that in just a moment here as Absolute finishes off Fangji. GG. All right, so uh, this is the final decider match in Group E. One of these two players going to be going on into the uh, the next round, into the round of 16, and he just barely misses that Overlord. Oh, my God. Already something crazy going on. Okay, let me explain what we just saw. We're on Vermeer, right? And there's an accepted way to send Overlords to scout because it gives you the best possible position. So... Uh, that would be a counterclockwise movement because where you come up is into the natural where you can see all the tech, the timing the nexus, things like that. But Absolute's Overlord was a little bit higher than what Free thought. Free sent the probe up, missed the Overlord and said, okay, he's not there. We'll go down here. So now he checked here. So he doesn't see him here. He's like, oh, well, maybe he's down here, right? So he'll probably send it here and come to Absolute's base last. Uh, so a little tiny mistake maybe there by Free. You know, you you have all these optimizations that you can do. And obviously there is some back and forth play between doing optimal scouting and suboptimal scouting to throw people off. And notice how the Zealot's going cross spawn because he's like, he must be down here. But now he's like, oh no, <laughs> we missed the Overlord or he sent it in a suboptimal scouting direction. Okay, anyways, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I like things like that. It's stuff that really keeps StarCraft very, very fresh. Okay, Zealot comes out and unfortunately gets a bit surrounded. He expected to already know what was happening by this time. That's the problem, right? The Zealot just walked into that. Uh, and, he, like, he should have been able to scout him much, much quicker, right? Like, he, that's just, that's the plan. You see the Overlord, you get there right away. If you don't see the Overlord because he's not in that spawn, then you'll get there before the Lings are doing that. Uh, anyways, the four Ling's going to run past everything. Absolute going up into the main base. He's already killed a Zot. Like, this is a good opener right now from Absolute, no doubt. Like, Free, I, I think, is certainly favored. Absolute's a good player, but again, Free is real ASL quality player. Uh, you know, again, one of the six dragons. Like, a lot of respect for Free. Um, but, yeah, th this, is, this is a good moment. Like, everything's gone pretty well for him based off of that Overlord scout trick. Uh, at the moment, like, we do have the gas up, not mining very much. He's microing very heavily. You can see absolute over 400 APM right now. He's trying to nail everything, right? Chase the probe down. Keep these lings alive. Do some harassment. Make sure you're creating your drones, getting your expansion up, all these different things. And look at that. I like that. He blocks uh, any movement through the back there with the probes. That would block any lings coming up and buy some extra time to kind of corner them. He has killed one of the lings, but the lings continue to rotate around. So he microed heavily here from Absolute. Uh, he's not getting damage, but this is this is good. And also, by the way, I do want to mention, if you guys have watched this entire group so far, if you look at how Free is dealing with these lings compared to how Movie did, when Movie played against Absolute and Absolute got lings in there, it is quite different. I mean, it's a different amount of lanes. It's a different scenario, but I do feel like Free is doing a little bit better. Although we do see a, a, a probe pick off there. More lanes have been made. Zergling speed on the way as well as the layer. I don't think we'll see anything like a speedling all in, something like that, right? I think the speed just going to help him to deal with any zealots coming out. There is the possibility that this could turn into a needleless opener. That sometimes pairs well with the speed up. Well, you're always going to get the speed upgrade when you go mutas, but you're not always going to go mutas when you go for the speed upgrade. Okay, that's that's the best way to put it right there. All right, so the, the Stargate goes up. He does have his speed upgrade, so, like, there's a little bit more potential for the Lynx to do some damage. That was nice. Oh, just barely doesn't get it. <laughs> Keeping these Lynx alive still. Like, even forcing lost mining time, that's, like, kind of what he's looking for at this point. It's really hard to get those probe kills. Occasionally, you might get one, uh, but still doing a good job with that. In the meantime, more speedlings are out. Ooh, he's going to get a free kill on this. Oh, that's not going to do anything against that many speedlings. Spire is on the way. Very normal stuff. Drone. Uh, 
Oh, okay. He had his hatcheries actually rallied over here for a moment, or at least one hatchery. Not sure how or why that happened. He could have, like, rallied it to send an overlord in the direction or something. I don't... No, no, that doesn't make sense either. Not sure. I mean, maybe just a misclick. But loses one drone. The other one is going to make it back home and get to mining. A little bit of a mistake there from Absolute. You're kind of kicking yourself, but it's not the end of the world. Additional macro hatchery here. And probably going to see another one here. All right. Plus one attack as well as air attacks on the way right now, as well as that Citadel. Photon cannon going up in the main base. Oh. Okay, so this is anti-muta uh, photon cannons that we see. All right, this is kind of tucked away. It's actually hard to get around these two cannons and this cannon and get in here with Scourge and sit there. So he doesn't necessarily feel like he needs a cannon that protects this spot. I've talked about that a lot. Uh, it has to do with the placement of this as well. But either way, getting some good scouting going on. The Hydralisk Den is up and upgrading Hydralisk Speed. Absolute definitely showing us what he is planning. This doesn't look like we're going to see any Mutalisks or anything. A fair amount of Speedlings out, but oh god. Oh god, that's that's actually... That's quite a few Zealots. Six against like 12 Zerglings is not even close. The Zealots absolutely destroy that especially if plus one finishes. Uh, that is a little ways off, but if he gets this hatchery, man, you're just about done. The drones are coming back, and that probably to fight, right? Like, he sends them to this patch, which is definitely not it. You got to, like, send them to the gas, maybe, if you want them to fight. Okay, a lot of Zerglings are out, and the Zelts come over to try to pick off some drones. That is exactly what they want. They killed two drones there. These Zelts in the back doing some pretty darn good trading. Ah, uh, a little bit of sloppiness there. In the meantime, there is a Zelt in the main base, too. Does get hunted by drones. Honestly, that was pr a pretty good hold for what a tough position that looked like when Free walked in. I thought Free would do, like, maybe slightly better, but he did force, like, a lot of Zerglings, some lost mining time, killed multiple drones, 48 probes against 33 drones at the moment as Hydra production does begin. Uh, and he actually cleared all the Zealots before plus one in legs. The legs just finished. Plus one is just about to finish. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think overall Absolute did a great job. He's sending a lot of units across the map, and there's a single DT here to save the day. No Overlord in sight. The Corsairs made sure of that. And now any ideas about busting? Well, they're gone. These cannons are going to make it before Overlord's speed is done. You can't really get up here. The DT making sure that these units have a terrible time putting a ton of damage out already. Four swipes. It's like 170 damage with that plus one so far. Trying to maneuver the Corsairs around for some harassment. He's not going to be able to get anything done there. And, well, more uh, photon cannons coming up. It looks like Free just wants to play very safely. Like, he sees the amount of units being made. Uh, well, you know what? I guess I guess it does make sense. Like, his Psy Storm has just started. He only has a small amount of Zealots. He did buy two Dark Templars, which kept everything back. But obviously, those are not going to be able to help uh, fight an army like this. So, very smartly throws up these cannons. And, in fact, the attack comes in. Oh my god, oh my god. Is there any chance for him to actually break here? The Zergling's doing a great job of taking Zealot hits there. Well, he picks off some cannons, but it looks like the cannons are going to finish just in time. Dude, I tell you what. I just got uh, some light nerd chills there. Look at this. Free gets a Dark Templar in during this to get six kills, but those cannons literally finished in perfect timing to hold off this big group of Hydras. If he had not started those cannons, the game may have ended there. Like, Free has always been considered an expert in this matchup. Like, back in the old Kespa days, he was one of the best PvZ players in the world. That was really uh, a, a big part of why he was one of the six dragons. Like, so so strong in that matchup. And you can kind of see that reflected here in his play. Like, this was, this was beautifully done. A great hold. I, I feel like every move he's done here has been really, really good. I tell you, I, I do like Free as a player. I really do. <laughs> he is he is wonderful to watch, and you can kind of see why, right? Like, he, a very different look than a lot of the other top Rodosses, right? Thinking about other PVZs that are, are really strong, like Bisu, Best, uh, you know, uh, Rain and all that. 
Free has his own style, and he's doing a good job. Like, look, he split this one zealot off knowing these would be cleaned up, and he's like, well, maybe you won't see it, and I send this back in when your uh, hydras leave, right? See, hides on the side. Okay, Absolute realizes that it was there, but he won't every time, right? So you're giving yourself an opportunity to punish an opponent that doesn't realize what's going on. In the meantime, while he's buying that diversionary time, he's using, or rather using that diversionary tactic to buy time, he's getting four cannons up, moving high Templars out, transferring his probes to a third base. This is a very clean, very fast third base right now. Now, Freeze Macro, uh, first off, he needs to clear at least a cannon here. Like, honestly, he should get rid of this cannon, maybe this cannon as well. You can probably keep this one, but this dragoon stuck, so I think he actually just has to, because this has to, like, walk through there, and that's very tough to do. Oh, trapped by the probe. Oh, he gets it out. Okay. Anyways, uh, like, I, I do think he should probably get rid of that one so that this is a cleaner exit way. Now, let's take a look at what's going on, on both sides. They both have really strong work counts, 59 against 55. Mutalisks have joined the fray. These are going to be specifically to pick off high Templars. He might go for some light harassment, but there's plenty of cannons, so, you know, see how much he gets. A couple probes at least. Gets a few and flies out. Uh, but Absolute is going into Lurker Hydra. So if he takes this position, oh, he's not going to. Free is moving out so quickly. Uh, Observer on the way as well. So Absolute's going to have to back up maybe a little bit. Okay, he just chooses to go ahead and burrow here where he was standing. Good spread. You want to make sure everything is at least one size storm apart. In jump the Mutalisks, and they're going to kill two of the High Templars off, but that's it. So that's 600 gas of Mutas, killing two High Templars. Uh, that plus two armor is on the way right now for free, really helping out against those snipes, any armor upgrades. The Lurkers, kind of heavily damaged here. Doesn't have a huge account either. Hydra's going across the map right now. Maybe for a little counterattack, maybe to run up and try to snipe some units as well. But free holding this high ground position, very, very smart, I think, with these dragoons. Has a few more zealots coming in, a lot of size storms available at the moment, and will start to break through. Absolute has to make something happen here. Size storms going down, comes in with a flank. It's actually a beautiful flank right there. Look at that, and he is going to be able to cream these dragoons. And it looks like the High Templar is going to be picked off as well. Suddenly, like, it really did feel to me like Free was playing a bit better here than Absolute. But that flank was amazing. The sandwiching of Dragoons, they are terrible when they get flanked. Like, they really need to be able to micro back and utilize that heavy range. Range units in general just do not want flanks to occur. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a big moment there for Absolute. He actually goes up in supply. He does have that fourth base, which is crucial as well. I think Free was trying to get a base. I kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye, but it looks like maybe that was denied. He has the one forge still running. Oh no, two forges running. Where is that second forge? I actually... Oh, there and there. Okay, so he's going to have that plus two armor pretty quick. But how many high Templars do we have right now? This is, this is scary. He's got a very good Dragoon count. He's got decent upgrades, but literally no size storms at the moment. Now he's moving forward somewhat aggressively. He's trying to zone everything out. He doesn't actually want engagement. He wants to pick a few units off and make you stay back because Free has to rebuild his army. Like he lost a lot of units up here. I liked the idea of him holding that high ground, but I guess that actually wasn't that good. If he had pulled back into a more defensive spot, he would probably still have all those high Templars. Here, he's got two storms available. He's got to make them count. Okay, that's a good storm. And he hasn't used this one yet. Oh, that's that's a beautiful storm right there. Forces a lot of movement. Dragoons have to micro back. You can't fight against just Hydra. You need other units in there. A Zealot comes up. Does help immensely. Even one Zealot takes a ton of hits from Hydras. So good tanking there. More High Templars are joining. Look at this. A Zealot High Templar mostly being made right now. So... One of the key things, if you're making Zealot High Templar, you need to keep your Dragoons alive. You need the consistent damage output here, but they need Psy Storms and Zealots to stay alive because Dragoons lose to everything Zerg has. It, maybe even drones. Uh, like, you need stuff in front of them. Now, a Storm going off to the bottom. That is very, very nice. 
Another good storm up here. Oh, but the Dragoon's going to start taking some massive damage as these Hydras run forward. Picks off some more High Templars. Zealots coming down to help. The Dragoon's standing their ground, dealing tons of damage here. Observers moving forward, nothing to snipe them. No Overlords in sight right now. The Dragoon's continue to put out damage on the Hydras, but Absolute, I feel like he's making progress right now. You see that Dragoon count falling. Uh, the High Templars, he's not able to keep any alive. A couple Storms go down and they're okay. But once he got one High Templar with no energy left, a lot of Dragoons being made to refill what he lost. And we're not seeing an increase in army quality here from Free, which is something you absolutely need against Sir. You just need, 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 if you're going to win the game, to continually build up either like you start getting overwhelming amounts of Zealots and Dragoons, or you build up that High Templar count for more and more and more size Storms. And that's not something he's able to do. Absolute putting on a stellar macro ZVP right now. Lots of Hydras coming out. We don't see any Hive tech or anything like that. He is continuing upgrades. Look at all those macro hatcheries. Very healthy drone saturation all around. Some Zealots trying to come around to do something, but Absolute's on top of it. He's got defensive Hydras sitting in the back as well. Little group of Hydras here with Scourge. These are for picking off any Observers he sees come out because he has more and more Lurkers on the way. And if you can just slow those Observers, an Observer costs half as much as a High Templar. So each time you kill an Observer, that's half of a High Templar they can't make. Right? That's It's big. It's a big deal. Very excellent upgrades for Protoss right now. 2-2 two, two going for that plus 3. Uh, on the Zerg side, there is plus two with a plus one carapace coming. They can't without Hive get that plus three ranged attack. So it can be slightly an annoying thing. Uh, three running down again. He still has healthy spy. Ooh, that was that storm was amazing. Uh, throws another down. The Zalt's eating a little bit of that as well. Picks off some of these overlords. And a Scourge coming up. Oh, man. You can't really target Scourge out with Dragoons. It's not really a thing. <laughs> so uh, down goes that Observer as well. So, oh, man. Has a good amount of High Templars, though. Maybe he can start a grind to come back here. We're going to see another couple Storms come up as Absolute comes up with another flank. Oh, God. He's shredding these High Templars now. Honestly, I think that... I think that closed the door on a free comeback. I don't think that Free can do it now. Like, that army looked really good. He was really starting to get a lot of key units, but to lose that many, you can see he's just falling apart. He's having to run backwards. It was an excellent early and mid game from Free, but really that one flank from Absolute, Free maybe staying a little bit too far forward. And that's a, that's a tough position. Like I was saying, I thought that that looked good. I liked that idea of keeping that high ground so the Lurkers couldn't take it over. But apparently Absolute knew better, right? Like, and Free obviously thought it was a good idea or he wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's rough. Um, it's unfortunate, actually. I would really like to see Free in the next round. Uh, I am a bit of a Free fan. So, uh, sad to see him go down, but it's great to see rising talent uh, occurring in the Korean scene, right? Like, it's, it's good to have a rotation, have more up-and-coming players doing better and better, beating these pros on consistent basises. And the Hydra's just about finishing this off. They do get stormed. They're kind of running into a meat grinder at this point. But really, if you just keep them back, mass up, you can kill this base, and it's over. No mining. No mining. Freeze on one mining base against four still. My god, the drone saturation is so spread that he's still got mineral patches even in his main base somehow. More lurkers being made. Honestly, I think Freeze just going to GG. Like, he knows he can't break out of here. The more lurkers that are added... Like, you're just never going to have enough size Storms. Picks off that Observer, even. Nice attention to detail here from Absolute. Not letting up. Excellent, excellent Storm. But you needed those before. Not when it's 92 supply against 128, and you're contained, and your mineral patches are drying up. We got less than a third of the original minerals there. Less than a fifth of the original gas on that geyser. And... This has to be the last try from Free. He's, yeah, he's he's looking super dead. Couple side storms go down. The lurkers, just literally impossible to ever break out. GG absolute advances.